Hi, right, Tom Allsub here from tpatennis.com. Today we're going to look at the two-handed backhand and analyze it in detail so that you guys can understand what's required to have a well-timed, well-coordinated stroke. So let's start by taking a look at Nishikori's backhand. And the first thing to notice is that when he starts to take the racket back, everything stays connected to the hips and to that left leg. So he's not flying the racket back, he's not turning his shoulders too much, everything stays connected here. Now as he completes the take back, you can see how the take back and the step happens at exactly the same time. And this synchronization is going to be really important for a few reasons. One is he's able to get this foot pointing down the court and this leg pointing down the court far easier than if he'd have turned his shoulders first and then gone to step. When you do that, often this leg gets into an awkward position where it's par parallel to the baseline and it becomes hard to turn your hips and your shoulders into the ball and pivot around that front leg. By taking the racket back and stepping at the same time, you create the torque in the hips here. So you can see, you can imagine how as he takes that racket back, you've got two things going opposite directions and you create a lot of torque in the hips and you can start to use large muscle groups. So then as you run the, it through, he's able to turn into the ball. You can see again the synchronization of the hip turning and the racket coming through. And then as he follows through, he's able to pivot around that front leg, turn his shoulders and hit that ball uh, really powerfully while staying balanced. Now, as we move on here to look at Djokovic, you can see the same thing. He's moving to a wide ball and his hips are going to stay connected to the racket or his racket is going to stay connected to the hips, I should say. And as he completes the take back, that's when you'll see the step and that's when you'll see his back. So up until this point here, you can see his shoulders are quite open, you can't see his back, he's getting his left leg out there, then he goes to step, synchronizes the take back and the step, that's when you can see his back, and again, you can imagine the torque here that he's created, he's gonna feel really tight in the hips, so, and again, this front foot is pointing down court because of the synchronization, now he can turn his hips into this shot, and pivot around that front leg and drive through the ball. So he's not dragging it around himself, he's driving the arms through. Now let's take a look at one of my students here. We'll get a better understanding of the repercussions of not doing what Nishikori and Djokovic are doing. You can see here that she starts to take the racket back rather early and because of this, the shoulders are turned. You can see her back, her opponent will be able to see her back at this point long before she stepped. So as she goes to step, it's very difficult for her to get that front leg into a, uh, into a comfortable position. And the result of that is it's difficult for her to use her hips as she swings towards the ball and she ends up dragging it around her. So you can see again, too early with the take back, not a great front leg position. And then struggling to turn the hips because she's sort of locked the hips out of it by turning too much and then dragging the ball around her there. Now, once we've spoke about this and worked on it for a little bit, you can see here how she's made an improvement. She's not showing her opponent her back yet. The racket is connected to the hips and to that left leg. Now, as she steps in, she creates a little more torque, better balance with that front leg, and now the hips want to rotate into the shot, and she can turn and pivot around that front leg. And this becomes really important when you're running wide for balls that you get into these positions so that you can take these balls cross court comfortably. Again, she's keeping the racket and the arms connected to the hips. She steps in, this ball's a little bit higher and she's able to turn into that ball and use her body more effectively. Now here is another player that I've been working with that was making the same error. Too early with the take back, really turning his back and his shoulders there long before he steps. So then when he steps, you can see how that foot is sideways parallel to the baseline. And again, it's gonna be hard for him to rotate into this ball from this position and he ends up dragging it around his body a little bit more. 
Now, the, the problem with this as well, and, and Shreya was doing this in the last video, is this front foot here gets into an awkward position where you're having to really pivot around a foot that's not in a comfortable place. Now, it reminds me a little bit of Tiger Woods. He's getting into, he was getting into these positions. Obviously, I'm not a golf pro. I'm not saying he shouldn't do this, but what I do know is that he's had a lot of left knee problems. So when you are pivoting around a, a leg that's in this position, it might cause a few problems, might cause a few injuries. Now, as you can see this video here, he's made some great progress where he's keeping the racket and the arms connected to his hips. Then when he steps, that's when he turns his shoulders. He's got the front foot in a good position. He can rotate the hips into the shot and drive those arms through instead of dragging them around his body. So let's take a look at a few more examples. And here we've got Andre Agassi and he's moving to a wide ball here. You can see how his shoulders are open. He's not turning his back yet. He's making sure that left leg gets out there so that he can just step forwards into the ball, synchronize the take back and the step. And as we run this through, you can see how he turns his hip into the shot prior to moving the arms. He turns and then he can drive the arms through that shot and pivot around that front foot. Now you can see that front foot actually pivots there again to help him to better turn and rotate into that shot comfortably. Now you might be thinking, what about Serena? Because we know that Serena takes the racket back very early, as does Venus. So she takes the racket back early to here, but interestingly enough, she's not gonna swing from here. What she's gonna do is move her feet and then you're gonna see the take back and the step happen again at the same time. So once we're in this position, she's moving her feet and then it's back and step again at the same time. She's creating a lot of torque here. You can imagine how tight everything is in here and she can then rotate, turn her hips into the shot and her front foot's in a comfortable position to pivot around and through. All right, so let's take a look at Venus. Again, early preparation, but she's gonna move in this position and then back and step at exactly the same time. She's gonna play this open just like Serena does. They play a lot of open stance backhands, but it's the same thing where they're able to turn the hips into the shot and pivot around that front leg. One more, we've got Marit Safin here, keeps it connected to the hips. His opponent won't be able to see his back steps, points that front foot down the court and turns the hips, drives through. And again, look at this front foot pivot just to make it even more comfortable. Now I'm gonna involve myself in this video because I know exactly what it is that I'm trying to do. And as I get this wide ball, I'm trying to get my left foot out there. Again, my opponent won't be able to see the back, my back. It's connected to my hips and my left leg. Once I get that left leg out there, I can step in and I can point that foot slightly down court, which would be impossible if I had to turn my shoulders now. There's no way I would have been able to get that foot here. Now again, I've synchronized the take back and the step, and then I can turn my, sh my look at my hips here, turn before I make contact, turn my shoulders and drive those arms through. And you can see that front foot there pivots just like it did with Safin and Agassi. And that allows me to take a wide ball cross court comfortably, which is where tactically I'm gonna to wanna to take this backhand a lot of the time. Now I have another player here that I've been working with who has a fantastic backhand. And you can see she keeps the racket close to her, connected to the hips and that left foot, left leg. And then as she steps, again, the synchronization is there. And from this angle, you can really see how she turns into the shot and can drive those arms through and get that really nice high finish. Let's watch a couple of these in normal speed and you can see again the synchronization there. Now I have one more player to show you and this just shows that once you get into these comfortable positions you can have beautiful swings that look very professional at a very early age. So he's got the shoulders open there. He's not turning his shoulders too much. He's keeping the racket next to his hips. He's getting that left leg out there 
Then as he steps into the ball, he synchronizes the take back and the step. The front leg is in a comfortable position. He can turn into it and drive those arms through rather than dragging the racket around himself. If you would like me to help you with your backhand or any other shot that you're having problems with, please send me a video via tpatennis.com and we can do a thorough video analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it helped. If it did, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.